It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Philip Sakel. Uh, Dr. Sakel received his doctorate from the University of Illinois College of Dentistry. He served two years in the U.S. Army Dental Corps and one year in Vietnam. His postdoctoral studies include the L.D. Pankey Institute, periodontics, endo, TMD, head and neck pain treatments, implants, dentures, and oral surgery. His biocompatible holistic studies include nutrition, homeopathy, toxicology, immunology, ozone, chelation, and environmental medicine. Dr. Sakel was the second president of the IAOMT. He has his master's in the academy and has served as chairman of the scientific review committee for over 30 years. He is recognized for developing the very first protocols for safely removing toxic mercury from patients while protecting the patient, dentist, and staff. His protocols are still being used by the Academy today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Philip Sakel. Thank you. As you can see, I'm one of the younger members of the Academy. <laughs> Next year will be my 50th year practicing. I'm enjoying it more and more. So, so what I have for you today is just a little timeline. Patient, patient came to see me in late, late April, and she, she said her tongue was sore, and she was having a hard, hard time speaking. speaking. So, so we, we took some pictures. pictures. And this, this is, is that very first picture of what her tongue looked like. Now, the interesting part was she had a number 19 that had a mouth filling in the occlusal, but she broke the distal lingual cusp off the so it was very sharp. So the first thing I did was round that off. And then we talked about what she should do, and I encouraged her to go see an oncologist, and she just didn't want to do it. Her husband had gone through the radiation and came home, and she says, no way I'm going to do that. Don't you have anything else? And I said, well, what we could do These are other pictures of the same lesion. You can see how large it is here. And what I tried to do is show the band consistently through these photos of what it really looked like. And you can get a little idea of the dimension of this lesion. This was all hard connective tissue in here. And she also had, if I can go back just a little bit here, she had a kind of a chasm down the center of the lesion, a little hard to see right now. And then under here you can see that. That was about five, six centimeters right in here. That was really hard. And it just looked god awful. So I told her, first thing we need to do is uh, uh, talk about informed consent. And I said, I have no idea if what I'm going to do is helpful. And in fact, I'll make a deal with you. If we do two injections a week apart, if we're not making progress, then you have to go see an oncologist to get other treatment. And she said, fine, I just don't want to have the other stuff done. So everything was done with local anesthesia, just a little a lock. Uh, Periodically, about every third or fourth visit, we would give her a cocktail of 3% propane, folic acid, vitamin B complex, B12, promiel, and lithiosome homeopathics. It was very difficult initially to get the pictures. You can see this band of hard connective tissue around here. So, so one of the first things thing I thought I wanted to do was to see whether or not that, that would resolve. So, so we would circle the dragon, and then every week we would give her uh, 30 cc's of ozone uh, and 10 cc uh, syringes with a 30 gauge needle. You know, initially we had a lot of bleeding. And this is what she looked like. A week later here, you're starting to see some resolution, you're starting to see some vascularization in here. Now, if it sounds like I'm slurring my words, I have to tell you that probably, and this pertains to all of you, the best part of this academy is all the things you learn about how to take care of yourself. Two years ago, I had a major stroke, 
and then I've been recovering since then, and my speech is getting better, but periodically I still slur a word. And I haven't had anything to drink except some water. So here's that, here's that, uh, it's almost like a, you know, an ice, you see that, this was about 10 millimeters deep. You see a little better right here. This is going backwards, backwards instead of forwards. My feet. Feet. So initially, it was difficult to get her on the regimen of coming back once a week. She had a social schedule she wanted to keep, so sometimes it was every two weeks. So this is on 516 we were looking at it. And then every time we had to kind of hold the tongue still, it was difficult to do this. We tried to take some photos of measurements of it. And then you can see here again, this is a pretty thick band. And that was very, very hard to shoot them right here. And you start to see some active vascularization in here already. So at 516, this is the area right here where she was biting her tongue. And then after about the sixth week, we said to her, let's give you a, a slit for nighttime wear so you wouldn't bite your tongue. This is just resolving a little bit sooner here. Some of her were out of focus because it's hard for her to hold her tongue still, even though she was numb. This is an area where just as she came in, she bit her tongue. Let me get over to the next slide here. Because you see she's got a little bleeding going on in there. It's a little hard to tell on that slide there. Right here. But steadily, we started to see a flattening of the lesion and the resolution. And more and more, we were seeing vascularization throughout the lesion. See here, it's starting to flatten out a little bit. The, the anterior part of the lesion really flattened out nicely, pretty quickly. In fact, she, she would come back, back in and say, "How are you doing? What's, What's it feeling like?" like? She's it's getting, getting a lot better. And every morning she would get up, she would look at it, and, and little by little, her little her speech grew, not like, like mine. Five twenty-five, five thirty-one. You can see it flattening down. Five thirty-one here. It's, it's not as mean looking now. Later on, as we go through, you see it seems like it's getting a little worse. But at the same time, we can see that it's getting smaller too. My. The goal of this is to let you know, don't be afraid if you see these lesions and start checking those things. Just make sure you get informed and stuff. And then I would do photos every week. so Because they forget how bad it was until they see the pictures. And before I came, I showed her these, these photos. She says, my goodness, look at that. Now, for some reason, uh, these pictures, we started to see the development of another kind of a defect in here. And I don't know what the reason is. So lately we've been checking into that. 6-8. And you can see this in here. Start to change a little bit. I was uncertain whether it was really getting better or is actually reverting. And she says, no, it's still getting better because my tongue is much more molded than it used to be. This here is a pretty cool picture. You can really see how much it's flattened out. 
quite a bit different from the first time. So I, what I wanted to do was try and hold the tongue in a position so that we could see the depth of the lesion from the healthy tissue up to where the first band of tissue was. So, so this is the end of July. And here you can get a little better idea of it getting smaller, and now we're starting to get some better healing in that area. She knows that she probably needs about as many visits as she's already gone through to get this completely resolved. And here is that other defect that appeared. I think it was a residue of that uh, uh, original area where you saw that whole line down there. It's just, just taking longer to heal. Look at that vascularization here. And when we inject, it would bleed a lot more. Uh, this one here, you can see it flatten down some more. It's a little different angle view. It's always difficult to look at the same view as you had previously. Uh, this, this area here was the towards the medial part of the tongue. Here is the center of the tongue. That whole band, the difficult tissue, was healing very nicely in there. Yes. Uh, well, she was brushing it every day. Okay, and we didn't get into anything else like supplementation or alcohol like that. There's something a little recommend to her. No. It's, it's hard to do. You know, have you ever tried to grab a tongue with even dry two by two and hold it and hold it still? It doesn't stay there. That's why some of the pictures are out of focus. I told her, I said, you're just playing with me there. This was about the last time that we had seen her, and this is where we started from. And it's quite a difference. And she is so appreciative she didn't have to go and have radiation and chemo with her. But we still got the option open that I may still tell her to go get it and we'll get it resolved all the way. But that's where we're at. The only other thing I wanted to add to you uh, is uh, back in June, I went to uh, a conference in Chicago uh, given by Guy Slich who does a lot of the implants bone and, and uh, barrier memories. And the one thing that I really took away was air abrasion. You know, the last talk we had here was on the biofilm. And what air abrasion is, is anybody familiar with air abrasion? It really takes the biofilm off. And I wanted to add some slides in here. I didn't have time to do it. It's a patient we did, we did six implants on. And, uh, Two of them were failing. You know, the original picture we had, you could see the height of the bone and where the implant was. A week later, we looked at it, we're starting to see a periimplantitis around uh, the gingival crust area. And then two weeks later, it was even more. So I, went, I got a um, uh, one with a soft tip with some light, 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 light powder in it. And then you can put it down into the, so I measured the depth of the pocket, slid it down, went up and down around the implant, took x-rays the following week when it came back, and the bone had already grown up about 50%. Did the same thing again. Two weeks later, it comes back, and the bone is almost all the way up to where it was when we first put the implants in. Just stunning what it does with the biofilm. And then you can actually watch the biofilm, because when they come back, you see the biofilm on the healing cap. Okay. And when you do the air abrasion on it, it's gone and it looks clean. And what's nice about the air abrasion, uh, because it's like a bottle washer, it pushes the cuticular tissue away so you can get that, that file film off the cuticular out of the crevices of the tooth. 
So that's basically what I want to show you. So we've, we've gone from late April now to uh, the end of August, which is four months, and then we've got some resolution of something that really looked very serious for her. Okay? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, if this, if this is the lesion here, you know, when you're looking at it, I would go in, and I always would go with a 45 degree angle to get into the lesion itself. I would go in about sometimes the length of the 30 gauge short needle, and then I would just go around it, and around it, and around it. And in the areas that I felt were a little meaner, I would put it right at the area. So it's just certainly the dragon and thoroughly uh, getting the ozone down into that tissue. Yes, ma'am. Well, it was interesting because initially, at times, it was difficult to get her number with a lock. Difficult to get her number with a, a, a lock. So we'd give her a lock. And as time has gone on, if it's healed, it's easier and easier to get an anesthesia mark. Yes, general local anesthesia is no longer buckle, just this lock. Yes. I'm sorry? Uh, well, sometimes it was 25 cc, sometimes it was 30, but generally it was about 30. We have three uh, syringes of ozone, and I was just, uh, I don't know. Uh, the machine was set at four, and then we put a quarter in. That's basically, I don't know what that translates to the game. And I think, pardon? How many what? what? I don't know. That's what she said. I don't know how to do that. I did, you know, my staff just brings me the thing to the setting. I should figure that out. And I should know that. Yes. No, no, not at the beginning. No. I don't know. I can tell you this, though, and this is part of what got me into it. About four or five years ago, I had a squamous cell carcinoma in my cheek. Uh, and the reason I knew it was nine millimeters in the diameter was I saw a physician who measured it, took the photo of it, and then he wanted to take it out. And I said, well, how much of a scar? He said, well, we'll take care of that. And I thought, sure. So, so I talked to Phil Malka, and he, he says, says just, just, just put about, about four injections around it once a week. week. Seven, Seven weeks later, it was gone. And, and then I went back to the physician, he didn't want to hear about it. And it's, it's never, never come back. back. Thanks. Thanks.